Kate Gibbs. We are your co-leaders for this evening, along with lots of other helpers. Um, oops, hang on, I gotta press something. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge that I am currently situated on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded lands of the Tunaha and Sequepmic nations and the chosen homeland of the Métis. Let us remember our connections to our siblings in these nations and pray for the day in which we might be together in right relationship. Welcome. Welcome to this gathering to recognize and celebrate both International Women's Day and the World Day of Prayer. Know that the whole of you is welcome. You're not asked to leave who you are at the door or in your home. Please bring who you are uh, with, you, with you to this community. But what you are asked to remember is that the others here have brought who they are into this community as well. And all, all of goodwill are welcome. Salome, peace be with you. The World Day of Prayer program is inspired by its motto, informed prayer, prayer and prayerful action. Through informed prayer, we seek out ways to act in solidarity with women and communities in need. When we prepare and celebrate World Day of Prayer, we do this as a community. We pray and worship in community. We continue our relationship in prayer and service throughout the year. We work together as women of various races, ethnicities, cultures, and traditions. We become aware of the worldwide community of people. We become enriched by the faith experience of other Christians we become aware of the burdens many people have to carry. We are challenged to use our gifts and talents and use them in service of society. In 2017, a group of EQ Minial Palestinian Christian women were chosen by the World Day of Prayer International Committee to write the 2024 service based on the theme, I beg you. Bear with one another in love, inspired by Ephesians 4, 1 to 3. Over the last four years through COVID, they then worked, prayed, reflected, and both, and wrote. On October 12, 2023, the World Day of Prayer Palestine Committee shared these words. In these trying times, let us remember that the human experience transcends borders and political differences. We must stand together as one global community advocating for the welfare and dignity of every individual, irrespective of their nationality, religion, or origin. Together, we can work towards a brighter and more harmonious future for all in this troubled region. As we observe the world do, prayer, our thoughts and prayers continue to go, to, to go out to those suffering in Israel and Palestine, and we hold steadfast to the hope that one day the people of this land will enjoy peace and prosperity. The World Day of Prayer Writing Committee of Palestinian Women now invites all people around the world to join them in prayer and action. We gather in the name of the triune God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. This is the opening prayer. Triune God, walk with us as we journey through the land where you lived and taught. Open our eyes to see the present suffering of the inhabitants of this land. Grant us the strength and courage to act and pray with all who suffer around the world. Amen. I invite you now to stand or sit as you are able to sing Voices United 684, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. <clears throat> Spirit Grace. 
And now I'm going to invite Natasha to come up and pray with me. <clears throat> and now we pray together a prayer for International Women's Day. Holy One, today we remember that women are a reflection of the glory of God. Today we honour the women of all times and all places. Women of courage. Women of hope. Women suffering. Women mourning. Women living fully. Women experiencing joy. Women delighting in life. Women knowing the interconnectedness of the human family. Women honouring the sacredness of the relational, the effective. Women quietly tending the garden of human flourishing. Women boldly leading the transformation of unjust global structures. Women seeking wisdom. Women sharing wisdom. Women receiving love. Women giving love. Women giving life. Women in the image of God. Loving God, we, we celebrate, celebrate your, your faithfulness, faithfulness and love. On this day, we commit ourselves to the promotion of the full humanity of all women everywhere. We know that whatever denies, diminishes, or distorts the full humanity of women is not of God. Help us to be faithful to your call to love. Amen. Let us praise God who brings us together to worship in love and unity. Unity, unity in the triune God, transcending differences in views and theological interpretations. Let us remember these essential qualities of people of faith, humility, gentleness, patience, and love. We recognize the challenge of accepting others without judging them. With humility and patience, we brave the challenges in our families, society, community, and churches. With gentleness and love, we overcome everything. We remain strong in our faith, knowing that we belong to God. Amen. If it is your tradition to stand for the gospel reading, please feel welcome to do so now. Um, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, verses 12 to 17, Jesus was talking to his beloved disciples in the hours before his crucifixion. Um. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay one's life, sorry, to lay down one's life for one's friends. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Please be seated. At a crucial moment of his life, Jesus gave the disciples this commandment, love one another, bear with one another in love. In today's service, we will receive three stories from Palestinian Christian women. Each story is a powerful witness to Jesus' call to bear with one another in love. Let us listen to Eleanor's story, read by Marla Norquay. I am a Palestinian Christian, a member of the Greek Orthodox Church in the Holy Land. I come, I come from a deeply rooted old Jerusalem family. In the early 19th century, my great-grandfather established St. George's Orthodox Church, which enabled Christians living outside the city walls to have a place to worship. 
That church remained in existence until the catastrophe, or Nakba, of 1948, when 750,000 Palestinians were forced to flee, disperse, and become refugees. My family was included. Due to heavy shelling and bombardment, my parents ran for their lives. They took shelter at my mother's cousin's home, hoping to return soon to their original home in St. George's Church. That never happened. Today, my parents' home in St. George's Church have become the Confederation House, an Israeli cultural center. Prior to fleeing, my parents' Jewish neighbors offered to store the treasures of the church, including icons and precious communion cups. They promised to safeguard my parents' property and belongings until the family's return. As my brothers and I were growing up, my parents remembered their neighbors graciously as they waited for the big return. They imagined themselves collecting these sacred items and thanking their neighbors for keeping their promise. Sadly, my parents have passed away without realizing this dream. And yet, I vividly remember that despite their pain and suffering over all they had lost, my parents were always thankful and spoke kindly about these Jewish neighbors. My parents taught me how to bear with others in love, always remembering to be grateful for those who do good. As I've gone through my life as a Palestinian Christian living in Jerusalem, I've chosen to be fully engaged with all members of the community at local and global levels. I learned from my parents' example how important it is to stay together with others, even when life is harsh and difficult. My commitment to my community started when I was in sixth grade. My Arabic teacher engaged me in running errands for her humanitarian work. She was gentle and loving, which helped me grow to value and love working to make life better for others. Later in life, I designed and implemented humanitarian aid and development programs, as well as social and community projects. These program, programs and projects served all people regardless of religion, ethnicity, gender, status, or need. I was privileged to help hundreds of women in Jerusalem, the Gaza Strip, and the West Bank to sustain their families as breadwinners. Many of these projects have grown and spread to other areas, positively impacting many lives. Life has not always been easy. I've experienced setbacks, obstacles, and even threats. However, I firmly believe that our community can be strong together if there is genuine love, understanding, gentleness, humility, and patience. Since my childhood, I have known that life is fragile and peace is not a guarantee. I could have left my country of my roots but I made the choice to stay and live out Jesus' commandment to love others as God has loved me. Thank you, Marla. The scripture theme this year comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians 4, 1 to 3. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humili humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Um. The message time has three parts to it. The first part, I'm going to um, uh, honor International Women's Day. I'm going to read a letter that I sent into the Pioneer this week. 
Um, so I'm, that's how I'm going to do the International Women's Day theme, and then I'm going to move on um, to the World Day of Prayer, and then I'm going to end with a song that I'm going to sing partially myself, but also invite you to sing with me as well. So here's the letter to the editor. Dear editor, this letter is written in honor and memory of Melanie Nicolades, Amanda Clearwater and her young children, Bethany, Javen, and Isabella, and her teen niece, Maya Lee Grattan. One woman is murdered every six days by her partner or ex in our country. These are some of the innocents we have lost already in 2024. Marked annually on March 8th, International Women's Day is a global day celebrating the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. The IWD 2024 campaign is Inspire Inclusion. Some may ask, do we still need an International Women's Day? According to the World Economic Forum, none of us will see gender parity in our lifetime, nor is it likely that many of our children will. So, yes. When we inspire others to understand and value including women, we forge a better world. And when women themselves feel inspired by being included, there's a sense of belonging, relevance, and empowerment. It is exciting to see the world of women's sports evolving to an even playing field with men. With games being played in sold out arenas, clearly the newly formed Professional Women's Hockey League inspires the current and next generation of girls and women. I asked members of my local memoir writing group for their thoughts on the IWD theme and was surprised by the intensity of their feelings. Women's agency is key. Humanity is not male-female. Sharing power demonstrates truly confident manhood. Being able to live our full life means no artificial restrictions due to gender. Motherhood shouldn't be an obstacle for advancement in women's careers. Men play crucial roles in fostering inclusion of women and admonishing other men for abusive behavior. The push-pull of patriarchy is still overarching. How do we inspire more conversation and less silence? In her article, Intimate Partner Violence is Not Just a Women's Issue, journalist, author, and human rights activist Sally Armstrong points out that while the status of women has been altered dramatically, the number of, women, uh, sorry, the number of students enrolled in law and medicine is now gender equal, the number of women in this country suffering from IPV, or intimate partner violence, remains a disgrace. She thinks that it is well past time for men to act. By championing inclusion, individuals, organizations, and communities can harness the full potential of diverse perspectives, leading to a better decision-making and innovation. What if all men took a look at their respective workplace environments and home lives to see how they can be more inclusive of and respectful to women and girls that they are in regular contact with? That would make a difference. That would be inspiring. Tonight, all of us have come together to be present with one another, to reflect upon the World Day of Prayer theme, bear with one another in love, and on the International Women's Day theme, inspire inclusion. We have heard so far tonight one, one, one woman's story of resilience, and we will hear two more stories, one on truth-telling and another on hopeful flourishing. The song I will sing shortly is called Rise Again. It is about survival, the ocean, which connects us all, and the importance of family and children in our lives. All of this for people of goodwill is a given. Love, truth, hope, inclusion, and the importance of family. But one thing for us women that is not always a given and can become complicated is the truth-telling part. I know it's not easy for me, one of my sons says that I beat around the bush at times, and it would be helpful if I was more direct. You better believe that I was direct when he got into mischief as a child and teen, teen, but apparently in other circumstances, I am not. 
When I was in an abusive relationship for years, but did not understand that I was in such a relationship, I wrote gratitude journals with scripture verses on top of each page and listed everything I was grateful for daily. For a whole year, there was not one line about what I was really experiencing, heartache, pain, confusion, fear, shame, anger, and helplessness were just a few of the feelings that were swirling around inside my head, but invisible to the outside world. It wasn't until I read a book on woman abuse and started seeing an abuse trained therapist that I found the courage to start telling my truth, at least in my journals. At first it felt wrong, uncomfortable, and downright scary, partially because I was worried that my former abusive partner might find the journals, and partially because I thought I was spiraling into a bad person. A favorite scripture verse that helped me sort through the cognitive and theological dissonance I was feeling is 2 Timothy 1, 5 to 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In their article, Empowering One Another as Women, Rosemary Catalano Mitchell and Gail Anderson Ricciuti Explore the idea that fearfulness is a significant spiritual and social issue for women in our culture. Crime statistics teach us that we dare never take it for granted that we are altogether safe on the street. From childhood, our mothers and possibly fathers taught us certain rules for survival because we were female, and those recorded themselves like a mantra in the depths of our consciousness. Do not walk alone at night. Hang on to your purse. Be courteous, but don't speak to strangers. Lower your eyes when approaching strange men, but always be alert. We also learn timidity because of our gender. Better to downplay your intelligence. Ladies never make the first move. Don't speak up for yourself and risk giving offense. It is up to us to keep the peace. Anger is dangerous. These internalized rules serve only to cripple our spirits and souls. Research by Dr. Carol Gilligan has yielded data concerning the psychological development of young girls that underscores the detrimental effect of timidity in women's lives. Girls up to approximately 11 years of age experience a healthy integration of integrity and intimacy asserting themselves freely and expressing feelings openly without fear of conflict. In adolescence, however, girls begin to lose confidence in their own voices and feelings, to fear that their opinions will anger others, and to silence themselves in favor of acting nice. The challenge for women, Gilligan theorizes, is not as formally thought to reach a developmental stage of strength and autonomy, but to reclaim something we have lost. We need to recover our identity as authorities on our own experience. I'll just say that again. We need to recover our identity as authorities on our own experience. I am still working on being an authority on my own experience. My writing group is gently pushing me to say and write more. I listen and write about other women's stories. I am righteously angry when I hear crimes against humanity, such as rape being used as a weapon of war. And I want to rise up and fight for my sisters because I know when one of us is hurt, we all hurt. I believe that is why we are all here tonight. Before my mother died, she bravely told me more about her story and her truth. For years, she had covered up some trauma she had experienced in her life and throughout her marriage. She wanted to protect us from all of that, especially as some of it was caused by my father. Yet she could never truly be herself when her truth was hidden away due to shame and fear of what the truth would do to our family, not to mention the fear of whether she would be believed. My mother, like many of our mothers and grandmothers, made the best decision she could at the time, and I thank her and honor her for that. In the end, she modeled for me that it is never too late to speak the truth, and she supported me in reclaiming my agency one step at a time. I honestly believe that the World Day of Prayer theme to bear with one another in love has to start here, inside each one of us. 
Every person's brave story of survival helps us all to flourish in a world that is right now all tangled up and quite scary. Let us now continue with a song of hope, and then we will hear more stories from the women of Palestine. When we get to the final chorus at the key change for you, you musical folks, I invite you to sing along with me. I'll signal you when it's time and Sally will put the words on the screen. Um, I invite you, oh, sorry, we changed. During this meditation time, we invite you to come to the front and light a candle in prayer for the current situation in the Middle East or other prayers that are on your heart. And if anybody needs some help getting up here, I know there's two or three gentlemen that are right at the ready. So I'm going to light it for us. And Lisa's going to play a little music for us while this is going on.
going to listen to a hymn. It's called Wa'atluba, I Urge You. It is a Palestinian hymn, and it is a song that was composed especially for the World Day of Prayer service. It is a call to bear with each other in love and unity, performed both in Arabic and English. وَأَطْلُبُ إِلَيْكُمْ أَنْ تَسْلُكُوا مُتَحَمِّلِينَ بَعْدَكُمْ فِي الْمَحَبَّةِ وَأَطْلُبُ إِلَيْكُمْ أَنْ تَسْلُكُوا مُتَحَمِّلِينَ بَعْدَكُمْ فِي الْمَحَبَّةِ I urge you to be patient with the calling you बंधुआ हूँ तुमसे विनती करता हूँ कि जिस बुलाहट से तुम बुलाए गए थे उसके योग्य चाल चलो Há um só Senhor, uma só fé, um só batismo. Let us listen now to Lena's story, read by Teddy St. Deville Fletcher on YouTube. Let us listen now to Lena's story. I am Teddy St. Deville Fletcher, and I'm a member of the Faith Community Christian Church in Toronto, Ontario. I'll be sharing Lena's words. On May 11, 2022, I lost my Aunt Shireen, a famous journalist who was killed in Jenin. For me, Aunt Shireen was like the branch of an olive tree, resisting the strong winds that threatened to erase the truth of Palestinian experience. When Aunt Shireen died, Palestine lost an icon, a legend, and a famous journalist. And yet, Shireen is all of the above and more. She was also my aunt, my godmother at baptism, and my best friend. Shireen has been my role model for as long as I can remember. She was also a role model to many young Palestinian women. Growing up, 
I aspire to be as successful, professional, and empathetic as she. I will cherish all the moments I spent with her talking about art, politics, and life, watching shows, going on vacations, and spending time with the family. For 25 years, Aunt Shirin dedicated her life to telling the stories of Palestinian experience and to being the voice of truth. She entered every house in Palestine and the Arab world through the TV screen. The day of her funeral was proof that she had also entered the hearts of Palestinians. The outpouring of solidarity we we'll witness at her funeral will forever be ingrained in my memory and the collective memory of Palestine. We are forever grateful to the strong and courageous Palestinians who resisted the threats from Israeli forces and carried Sherin's casket on their shoulders. Many people did not know that my aunt was a Palestinian Christian. Sherin's faith led her to bear with all in love, despite differences in faith traditions. She stood with all who were being harmed. She struggled for both Muslims and Christians to have access to the holy sites in Jerusalem. Her faith telling was even a way of bearing with the occupiers in love. Speaking the truth is a form of loving resistance because it calls the oppressor back to their humanity. Although Shireen, a branch of the olive tree, was cut down too soon, her legacy lives on. Her memory now nourishes the earth from which we will gain strength to continue telling the truth and demanding justice. I invite you now to stand or sit as you are able to sing uh, in our More Voices book, God Weeps. <clears throat> Hearing the story of a woman who dared to speak her truth in love, let us commit ourselves to the journey as she did. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we now pray for women everywhere, for the world and for those in need. After each petition, you will hear us pray, lead us into a life worthy of our calling. You are invited to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of inclusion, bless us and make us witnesses of peace and justice. Open our eyes so that we can see things as you do. Protect us from all forms of violence, hurt, and revenge. 
We pray especially for women who are denied education and other basic rights. We pray for women who are abused and suffer violence. We pray that our churches, as well as our government, governments, will create safe places for women. Help us to raise our voices and use our gifts and talents to help others. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Could I just ask those of you who are reading to perhaps just come a little closer um, to the front? Thank you. Refugee God, who as a child had to flee a massacre in Bethlehem, you know the plight of refugees and the displaced. Remain with us and help us in these dark and difficult times. Guide and protect refugees and displaced people. Bring them to places of safety. Open the hearts of those receiving refugees and guide the actions of political leaders so that all needs will be met. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. God, our rock, you have taught us to build our lives on you. We pray for those who are homeless, we pray especially with Palestinian families whose homes have been demolished or are under threat of demolition by Israeli authorities. Bring these families justice and end this cruel practice. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. God of peace, we pray for a just solution to the ongoing conflict. We also pray for the city of Jerusalem, sacred to three religions of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. We pray for equality, freedom of religion, freedom of movement, and freedom of expression. Teach us as Christians to follow, to follow the way of Jesus, sharing love with all the inhabitants of the land lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Healer and sustaining spirit, we pray for all those who are sick, who are dying, and who are grieving. When we are lost and weary, strengthen us. Revive our dry branches so that they yield good fruits again. Give us new life and the hope of resurrection. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, we have carelessly destroyed our beautiful creation. We have harmed the environment, the flora and fauna, and the creatures of the air, land, and water. Our destruction of the earth has caused the climate crisis. Help us to appreciate and love your creation. Help us to repair what we have destroyed and lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Lord, our prayer. God of unity, your child, Jesus, prayed that your disciples and followers would be one as you are one. Teach us, your servants, to treat others justly, fairly, and with love, even though we may speak, live, and pray differently. Bless the global church and bless the faithful women everywhere who share your good news with others. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Hear our prayer.
We offer these prayers and the prayers of our hearts known only to you, trusting that you hear and answer them. In the name of God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. We continue now with the prayer that Jesus taught us. This prayer calls us to bear with one another in love through all the difficulties of life. Please join with me in saying together the Lord's Prayer from the New Zealand Prayer Book. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In the times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. We will now hear Nora's story based on her interview with the World Day of Prayer International Committee, as well as recent articles she has authored, read by Jana Van Erk, A Story of Flourishing. I am Nora from Jerusalem. I was born in Palestine and grew up in Jerusalem, Jordan. Since 1967, I have lived under occupation in Jerusalem. My parents and other family members survived the Armenian genocide, so they know what suffering is and what humans can do to each other. It is not the will of God to see people killed. My grandfather wanted us to look at what suffering does and how we can do things for a better world. For us, he hoped that they will learn to scorn injustice and face hardship, never get discouraged, and become leaders in control of their lives and models of behavior to others. My father's family had been pharmacists in Nicomedia, modern Turkey, and lost two pharmacies to the Turks. In Jerusalem, they started a pharmacy with the Harami family on Mamilla Road, which they lost with other possessions in 1948. They were refugees in Lebanon and Syria until the Lutheran World Federation brought back professionals to Jerusalem at the beginning of the 1950s to build up the new reality. My father served at the Augusta Victoria Hospital as a pharmacist and established with Dr. Mohammed Nakib Husseini the x-ray department. How can we do things to create a better world is very much a part of World Day of Prayer. My introduction to World Day of Prayer was through my mother, who was one of the Armenian readers in Jerusalem. I also became a reader. By 1994, which was the year Palestine was invited to write the service Go, See, and Act, I was nominated by the Armenian Patriarch to represent my church. In 2017, Palestine again was invited to write the service. When the World Day of Prayer International Committee chose the theme, because we did not suggest it, they had in mind the situation of the Middle East. We saw it as a message to us personally. How do we bear with one another, with one in another in love and unity? An alternative motive was to see if we could, I can't read that, bring about understanding in this troubled area. The whole world is troubled, and so the voices of women speaking up loudly, not only about their suffering, but also their hope, is really what makes this movement a unique movement. I work for justice. This is the only way to live, respecting others but speaking my mind. When we moved to Jerusalem, we did not want to be secluded. I learned Armenian at home, grew up in the Orthodox faith of the Armenian Ap Ap Apostolic Church, but studied at a Catholic school run by the Sisters of Our Lady of Zion, and then attended Protestant universities. My husband was Greek Orthodox, and I have worked with both the Armenian and Greek Orthodox churches. 
One of my current prayer requests for Palestine is the end of the occupation, but it will not bring peace. It is important to take people out of their boxes, for everyone to see people as equals, living in dignity and equality, having real freedom as human beings. Re-education is needed. Let us work together to make sure that global justice is done. Thank you, Jana. Today, we have been blessed by witness of Palestinian Christian women. These stories have shown us the power of bearing together in love. We come now to a time of offering. The World Day of Prayer is an ecumenical movement led by women. Each year, we stand in solidarity with each other through our prayers and actions. The offering is part of our common vision to improve the lives of women and children around the world. In Canada, under the leadership of the Women's Interchurch Council of Canada, your offering funds World Day of Prayer, as well as grants for projects to restore hope to women touched by injustice. We dedicate the offering to this ministry of prayerful action. And for a list of approved World Day of Prayer 2023 grant projects, you can go to their website at wic.org. And for us tonight, our offering envelopes are in the narthex at the back of the church beside the or inside the offering plate. There are pens there, except I forgot to do that. So we'll find pens if needed to fill out your name and address if you would like a receipt. These can be filled out after the service during the refreshment time and left in the offering plate. And for folks on Zoom, you can check out the wic.org um, website to donate. So I invite you now to remain seated as we sing together the offering hymn, which is Voices United 537. <laughs> Let us pray. God, may this offering be a sign of our commitment to lead a life worthy of your calling. May it be a powerful instrument towards abundant life for all living beings. Amen. In, in the midst of should I say this? sharing the peace of Christ, in the midst of injustice, wars, and suffering, God calls us to bear together in love. When we stand together through difficulty, we live into the peace that God promises us. Let us speak these words together in Arabic. Salom al-Masa, which means the peace of Christ, or simply salom, which means peace. Did we get it right? <laughs> Did you come and teach us then? Come and tell, <laughs> please. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, let us pray. Salam al Masih. Which is. Yeah, it's the same. Salam al Masih. Um, we usually in Palestine say Salam al Masih to everyone. It's a blessing, which means the peace of Christ. One more, one more time, say it, and then. Okay, we'll... Salam al Masih. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> um, let us now take a moment to greet one another with a sign of peace or a handshake and a hug. 
please feel free to unmute your so oh, no we decided not to do that never mind <laughs> let us now take a moment to greet one another with a sign of peace or a handshake or a hug as you're comfortable those online may be creative and send a greeting of peace through chats <laughs> Okay, you're up next, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's a bit risky sending women off for the peace of Christ. You might never get them back. <laughs> All right. Once everyone is seated, please join me in speaking aloud the commitment of your heart. May, May we, commit we commit to working for peace as we stand with all women, especially those experiencing oppression, violence, and discrimination. May we be faithful advocates for decision makers working on all levels of society, including religious institutions. May we bear with one another until God's justice and peace reign throughout the world. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh. Let us now go and be agents of peace and justice. Amen. <laughs> We have a closing hymn, which will be on YouTube, up on the screen.
Yes, that was beautiful, wasn't it? Just before the closing blessing, I want to remind you and warmly invite you to stay for refreshments prepared by Bendina and other treat fairies. Uh, I hear there's some Palestinian sesame cookies back there as well, rumor has it. Um, and a big, big thank you to each and every one of you for being here tonight. Um, this is actually been so fun on a Friday night. Who wouldn't want to be here, right? <laughs> for Kate, thank you so much for being my co-leader tonight, Kate. <laughs> and for Sally, for the beautiful PowerPoint and, and all the organization and emails from me. And for Lisa, the beautiful music, just, just going for it. <laughs> And for all of our volunteer readers, I really, really appreciate it. It just made it so nice and warm to have to be here as a community. And I also want to make mention and thank Inspire Floral for um, um, putting together the flowers for us today. And also Marilyn Kreivinger did some advertising for us. So thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> So as we go from here, what? Oh, <laughs> you're my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> as we go from here, remember that there is nothing you can do to make God love you more. There is nothing you can do to make God love you less. God's love is unconditional. And calling all of the angels together, God said, look at them. Look at them, for they are beautiful to behold. Amen. <laughs>